Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining me for this update on COVID-19. I'm going to offer a few brief updates and then open the floor for questions when we get to the question and answer part. Uh, Director Mark, uh, Mike Bruno from JSO is with us. Our Fire Chief Keith Powers is with us and our uh, Emergency Operations Center Director Steve Woodard is with us as well to take questions. Also joining us today to ask questions from the perspective of our young people are two student journalists, Taylor, a junior at Darnell Cookman School of the Medical Arts, and Tanner, who attends Mamie Agnes Jones Elementary in Baldwin. I want to thank both of you for joining us and look forward to your questions. Yesterday, I announced that I signed a proclamation extending the state of emergency for Duval County for 30 days. There's been some confusion about what that means, so let me clear that up right now. Emergency declarations allow municipalities and counties to receive state and federal funding and resources in times of emergency situations. These can include hurricanes or a public health crisis like the one we are experiencing. That funding is crucial to cover costs for things like testing at Lot J, uh, personal protective equipment for those in contact with COVID patients, and it also helps offset overtime and salary costs for those responding to this pandemic. Per city ordinance, these declarations are limited to 30 days, so therefore we had to extend. So we had access, continue to have access to these resources for these important things. Typically when something like a hurricane, the emergency ends in less than a week. This action is separate, completely separate from my Safer at Home executive order that closed non-essential businesses. We are not extending that 30 days, although we're also not in a situation where it's safe to lift, lift those orders. They stand for the time being. My team and I are continuing to monitor information in our executive orders daily to decide whether further action is needed or if it's time to scale things back. Look, I want people back to work, back to their routines as much as anybody. I was just so spent, uh, had a good call with Governor DeSantis. Uh, we want this economy up and running again. We want people to get back in their routines, earning money, get businesses back on their feet. And that's what we're working towards, but we have to do it in a way that's safe based on the information we have in terms of testing, positive, and hospitalization admissions. Here in Duval County, it looks like we may have flattened the curve. That'll be more clear to us in the next week to week and a half when the models tell us we will peak. I'm proud of the people of this city and this community in the responsible way that you, most of you have acted. Uh, I see people socially distancing. I see people wearing masks. I see people taking this seriously. And by doing that, you are doing your, par your part in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Tonight, the Jacksonville City Council will consider two emergency bills put forward by my office to help us ensure we have the staff in place to respond to COVID-19. This bill allows former Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department firefighters and Jacksonville Sheriff's Office police and corrections officers to come out of retirement to work during the emergency with no impact to their pensions. This is similar to actions taken at the state level a few weeks ago and will put experienced, knowledge professionals back on the street at a time when our community needs them to respond to this crisis. I'm thankful for first responders who will answer the call to serve, serve once more and look forward to earning support for this legislation from my colleagues on city council. Through the first week of our partnership with ViStar, approximately 100 small businesses have been approved for over $3 million in COVID-19 relief loans with hundreds of additional loans in process. ViStar estimates roughly $20 million of loan are working through the process right now. We're happy this program is seeing such strong results in assisting small businesses and their employees rapidly at this difficult time. When we reopen our city, and we will, it will be done thoughtfully and based on empirical data. But when we do reopen, we must do responsibly, do it responsibly and mitigate the possibility of a spike in positive cases. That will be accomplished by a combination of enhanced testing when we go back to work, contact tracing, and personal responsibility. Contact tracing simply means if somebody tests positive and understanding who they've been in contact with so they can then be tested and isolated. For now, we must stay the course, continue to social distance, and stay at home except for essential tasks. Wear a mask or a face covering when you're out getting groceries and supplies. Please, this will help us take care of each other. We'll get back to life as we know it. We're resilient 
And this is our calling right now to deal with this as a people of, of the people of Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a city full of kind, generous, and hearty people. That's why I know we're going to come back from this. A few weeks ago, I shared a quote from Fred Rogers that talked about looking for the helpers in difficult times. We have many helpers right here in Jacksonville. There are companies like Bacardi who started manufacturing hand sanitizer, Fast Signs who shifted to making protective equipment, and even small businesses like Cinnamon's Quilt Shop who are making masks for local hospitals. And there are individuals like Leslie Lachey who made Easter baskets for area children, Susan Acid who works on the front lines of Sulzbacher Center, and Allie Forche and her neighbor who wrote positive messages on the sidewalk in front of St. Vincent's for our essential workers. These are just a few examples of businesses and individuals that are helpers, and there's so many of you out there. Thank you. Of course, first responders, healthcare workers, sanitation professionals, grocery store employees, and everyone who is keeping our city moving and running, thank you. Before we go to questions, I want to remind people to make that call at 7 o'clock tonight. Call somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Call someone maybe that you have that you care about. Uh, share with them and listen to them. This will have an impact on you and the person that you connect with. I also want everyone to be mindful, mindful of those struggling with depression, alcohol and drug abuse, thoughts of suicide in these hard times. If you know someone who struggled with any of these, please check in on them and let them know that you care about them. We have a list of resources available on our city website at www.coj.net backslash recovery resources. And the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is available 24-7 for those in need. 1-800-273-8255. 1-800-273-8255. With that, we'll open it up for questions. Scott with WJXT. Yes, Mr. Mayor, two questions. Um, the first concerns emergency responders, maybe for you or Chief Powers. You say you're bringing in retired personnel. Is that due to the 77 firefighters who are in quarantine? And we were wondering, could they be um, given rapid testing to get them back on the street sooner? Uh, Chief Powers, I'll let you take that question. Chief and I were actually talking about testing earlier today uh, as it relates to our public safety workers. Go ahead, Chief. Scott, as it relates to our public safety workers, the, um, we have, we're following CDC guidance and, you know, in the, in the Department of Health. Once they've tested, they still have to clear that 14-day window um, before we can get them back. And so that kind of puts us at a little bit of a deficit. We will be getting, uh, by, by the end of this coming weekend and Monday, we'll be getting about 26 of those firefighters back. We actually had two more go out last night that um, we had to put out that are due to illness and they're being tested today. Um, but as far as it relates to those people coming back to work, we'll, um, we're only going to use them as needed. Right now we're in a good place and we don't need it, but we needed to get a, um, a stopgap measure in place so that we can respond to the citizens that we serve if needed. And I'll, I'll follow up to that, Scott. I, you know, the, the, the question is access to the rapid testing. It's not widely available. However, I did tell the chief this morning that I was going to make some calls uh, and, and pursue, see if we could get access to something uh, for our uh, fire rescue and uh, police officers. Don't have the answer to that yet. It's something we're looking into. Courtney with Action News. Um, yes, good afternoon, Mayor Curry. Uh, my first question for you is, since we've been having this uh, unpleasant weather here, are there any concerns about this about how it's stopping testing at lot j because a big crucial part of flattening the curve here in jacksonville has been how many people we've been able to get tested there sure that's absolutely a concern um but it, we've got we got to deal with weather you know yet another uh, uh uh another hardship in the middle of this pandemic uh so we're just gonna have to work through it and i'd ask people if they have symptoms uh, while we're waiting to get Lot J reopened, uh, which I believe there's a timeline this afternoon, uh, make sure you're isolated and please don't be out and about and in contact with people. And when we'll let you know when it's open, get out and get tested. You can also contact your healthcare provider uh, as well and the health department. And with First Coast News. 
Good morning, Mayor. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, one for the fire chief, uh, but first for you um, about unemployment concerns. I think that's the number one concern we hear at our station. People are of trouble filing. I wonder if that's something you've had conversations with the governor about and if your office is also receiving similar complaints. Uh, for the fire chief, though, I just wanted to double check. It sounded like he said there were two more firefighters sidelined with illness. Um, I wanted to just see if we could get a current number of our first responders who are ill. I would say I, we're not directly hearing about uh, our people understand the unemployment is a state issue, but I look at the governor is deploying the resources available to him to uh, to get that thing, get money to people, the, the money that they that they need. Uh, I, I understand it's a hardship. Um, you hate to see people struggling and frustrated, but I, I can assure you this, this this governor is committed to uh to getting the system uh operating the way that it needs to be operating he understands the pain that people are in and is deploying all the resources that he has to uh to get people the the, the money uh, i'll turn over to the fire chief now yeah and the uh, correct number this morning is 79 we had two more firefighters that um, started exhi exhibiting signs and symptoms and we're having those uh, firefighters, we've got them in self-quarantine right now and having them tested. And that's just to protect the workforce and to protect the citizens that we respond to. Thanks. And let me just add, uh, I want to repeat what I said a moment ago, but the question on concerns about lot J testing uh, uh, bears repeating. There are other options to test while lot J is down due to weather. Again, you call the health department, you can call your healthcare provider, uh, and you can find access at other other, other access points. Uh, ta Taylor with Darnell Cookman. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Curry. Um, in the beginning, we were told that the virus mostly affected older people and people with weakened immune systems. But as time has progressed, statistics are starting to show that younger people are also being greatly affected. Um, once the safety at home order is lifted, how can we make sure that younger people like myself won't negatively impact the improvement of the curve? Well, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you being here. Um, we all have to practice the same behaviors, uh, and that is to be mindful of people's space uh, and to social to act in a way where we're being socially distant uh, and to wash our hands uh, regularly, to not be putting our hands on our face, to try to be mindful of that. I believe that we're going to have to be, uh, these behaviors are going to be with us for a period of time as we come out of this. Uh, and I think we just should do it uh, for a period of time. Uh, that's how we will remain safe. That's how we'll prevent another spread from happening again. Uh, and so we're, we're just all in this together. You know, what is so unique about this terrible pandemic and, and just this worldwide thing is this is a crisis that is affecting everyone, um, the whole world, the whole country, the whole state. And everybody is in this playing their part. And so uh, every individual can have an impact on saving a life by practicing these behaviors. Sky with WJCT. Hey, how's it going, Mayor? Um, quick question about the National Guard. Yesterday, Governor DeSantis had brought up that National Guard would be going to different uh, assisted living facilities and, health and, and facilities throughout the state. Is that something that we're going to see in Jacksonville soon? Uh, I know supposed to start in South Florida. Can you give us a timeline on that at all? I don't know if Chief Powers or Woodard, Director Woodard has, wants to take that. I'll defer to Director Woodard. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Department of Health uh, is currently working to go around to the assisted living facilities. Uh, we've also been doing that uh, as of yesterday, we've distributed over 500,000. That's over half a million pieces of personal protective equipment. That's masks and gowns and other supplies that they need at these facilities that uh, have been impacted. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the guard activities. Uh, we've not seen that uh, working here yet, but uh, we can let you know when that starts. Tanner with Jones Elementary. 
Um, hi, Mary Curry. Hello. What? Thanks for joining me. What do your kids think about the virus and how are they handling the changes with schools? Uh, well, so my daughters are both, uh, well, one of my daughters participates in dance. Uh, another daughter was, uh, had been in cheer, was getting ready to be in track and field. I have a son that uh, plays football on enough weights. Uh, so they miss their activities, clearly. Uh, and they miss their friends. They want to be around their friends. So they're experiencing what uh, you are what all, uh, all people that are home from school are, whatever their extracurricular activity is and their friends, uh, those, those, those routines and those relationships are uh, apart right now. However, one of the things that my daughters are doing, uh, seventh grade and fifth grade, is they have a routine. They get up every morning like they're going to school. They are logged on for virtual learning, learning at 8 o'clock. Uh, and I think that that's helpful because it keeps them in a regular schedule. Of getting things done. In the afternoons, uh, my daughters will go outside and go for a walk or a bike ride or a run. Uh, in the evenings, my son will usually go in the garage. He's got a weight set and do a workout and maybe do a run. So just to get some physical activity in as well. Um, one of the things I wish I could get them to do more of, maybe I need to encourage them some more, is start reading more books while we're home. But uh, I would imagine. So tell me, what's what's going on with you? What do you miss? What's your routine look like? Feel like? It has been a lot to figure out, but I am doing okay. You doing okay? Yes, sir. You miss you miss school? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, we're thinking about you, and I guess rest in this that everybody's experiencing it. And I think we're going to come out of this with a deep appreciation for each other, right? And I think we'll come out of this maybe, you know, when you're around people all the time, you find things that annoy you, you get aggravated with people. I think we come out of this maybe with more appreciation for each other, uh, including uh, our faults that we have. Thank you. AG, for the politics. Hey. Good morning, Mayor. How are you doing? A uh, quick question uh, regarding sales tax collections, um, how they've been affected by this crisis. Um, is the city having to tap into reserves? And is there talk about putting another bond issuing out there? Uh, I'm hearing there are pressures in municipal bond markets. So how is the city dealing with uh, short-term revenue shortfalls? What did it look like? We, we are uh, not having to tap into reserves at this point. We're financially sound and strong, but we understand the financial strain that is coming. Uh, CFO is meeting with the, this teams regularly, building a plan. I'm gonna at some point be able to talk about what getting back to work looks like, which will include uh, government doing projects, infrastructure projects that are on our list. How do we expedite those? But we're gonna have to, um, in a difficult budget budgets, we're going to have to make difficult choices, but we're going to have to, we're going to have to push. Uh, we're, not, we're going to have to go be really aggressive in a way that is most helpful to individuals and people in this city. And that is making sure we have jobs. That is making sure that people are getting a paycheck and that is making sure we're getting people back on their feet. And those are the kind of things I'll be thinking about as we work through the next difficult budget and we look at our financial resources and even facing the reality that taxes are going to likely be down. Ben with Action News. Hi, Mary Query. Uh, got three things for you. Uh, first off, you mentioned the JFRD, JSO um, folks coming out of retirement. How do you pay for that? And how do you know they're physically able to, to do the job and what the, what's the job going to entail that you have them do? Uh, it, how we pay for it, we, we general fund dollars. We, 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 it's just like bringing on additional personnel. And uh, Chief Powers, I'll let you address fitness. Yes, so Ben, <clears throat> ben they, the, the folks are still going to be required to have their, their, all their state certifications. These are going to be people that have just recently retired. They haven't been gone maybe but a year or so. It's not going to be people that's been gone for a long time. 
and we'll be able to, you know, pick the people that are in the best shape to bring back. Obviously, we want to perform a great service for this community. Mike with the Daily Record. Hey, good afternoon, Mayor. Um, just a question on the uh, small business loan program. You said that uh, ViStar is uh, currently processing about uh, $20 million uh, worth of loans. You said about 100 loans, up to th uh, around $3 million have been uh, uh, processed at this point. Has the city and ViStar set any type of threshold um, as to uh, uh, what point the um, that would be considered to increase the initial $50 million loan pool for that program? And um, when do you think a, a decision like that will be made? We have not, uh, we're not at that point yet. And it, it's just, we got it. We mon everything we're doing, we're monitoring on a daily basis. So we're not surprised. But at this point, there's capacity, they're processing, getting dollars to small business owners and getting them to them fast. But that's a question that we'll have to continue to evaluate. Important thing right now is that it's working and cash is getting in the hands of small businesses. Christopher Hong with the Florida Times Union. Hey, so I just want to um, make sure I have the, this clear regarding the um, the legislation to bring on recently retired JSM and JRPD people. Uh, Chief Powers, you said that there's no manpower shortage right now, and this is just a stopgap measure just in case you need it. Um, is that hold true for JSO as well, or are they experiencing a shortage of manpower right now, or is this a precautionary step? Director, Director Bruno, if you want to take that question. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the, the sheriff mentioned uh, last week that uh, any given day, the sheriff's office has 150 to 200 officers uh, additional per day uh, added to the staffing. Um, we're using those officers that are off or um, on their normal days or where they wouldn't be working um, to, to carry the additional load. Um, I mean, and Chief Powers mentioned it as well. The people that would be coming back, they've recently retired. We have a physical uh, exam that we would run them through and a PT test that we would run them through to uh, prior to reemployment and, and bring them back. So there's some measures in place and we're continuing to discuss what we're going to do with that, but, but we'll evaluate it uh, as we move through the process. This is the last question, Vic with WJXT. Good afternoon, everyone. Has there been talk about the accuracy of the test results at the city run properties? Because we're starting to hear from some people that have been tested that now believe that they got false negatives because uh, they're going back, they're going other places and they're hearing that. I, I know that it's speculative, but that's what we're getting into the newsroom. So I don't know if this is for Chief Powers or Director Woodard, um, but what is the talk about the accuracy and, and the nose versus throat swabs? Uh, either Chief Powers or Director Woodard. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I've heard any, any, anything like that going on, but obviously, you know, if there's not enough virus in the nose when they do the nasopharynx swab, they could test negative and then later on test positive. So. If they're still having signs and symptoms and, and not sure, you know, that they're not sick, they can always either go be retested at Lot J or they could go to their primary care physician and be reevaluated. You know, we don't, want, we don't want people out there, if they think they're sick, we don't want them out spreading the virus. So we need to make sure, you know, what they, uh, you know, they've been tested appropriately. All right. Thank you again for joining us for today's update. Uh, make sure you are practicing social distancing. Please wear a mask if you're out getting essentials. Uh, wash your hands and take care of each other. Thank you.